Hey everybody, my name is Hunter Fox. I'm introducing Dice Ball Battles today. This is a, well, this is a nice little pretty box done by Ollie Hosegood, but what's inside is what matters. We have 16 D12s, and these aren't just like standard dice that you use as a player during your uh, weekly game of D&D. No, these are actually for like the Game Master and even War Gamers. What these dice do is they're color coded and they represent terrain features on a battlefield. They use a simple mechanic, a dice fall mechanic, hence the name dice fall battles. You grab a handful, you throw them down on your play area like this handy dandy Chessex mat, and then you record the terrain features based off of what falls. So just to show it off as quick as possible, I'm just gonna grab, I always wanna grab this yellow die. It's a context slash special die. It kind of adds something cool to the environment. What I'm going to do is then grab, I'm actually gonna throw these back in. You gotta trust me, my eyes are closed. I'm gonna grab eight, okay? Or rather, I'm gonna grab seven. And then we're gonna use only eight dice to uh, to actually generate something. But you could use as many as you would like. And you can even reroll as you see fit. This is the prototype box. Prototype dice, by the way, but the dice are uh, there, I think tomorrow, as in June 20th, they're done manufacturing. And they're gonna be hitting Amazon very soon. So. Let me go ahead, grab these dice. I'm just gonna roll them onto the play space. Ooh, you saw that. That was fast reflexes. We're gonna re-roll one. And if they go off screen, I'm just gonna re-roll them. So I want you to see, and I'm kind of just dropping them, not really looking at what they are, um, but putting them, okay, I need to re-roll this one. This one rolled off. Oh, there's a little curve to the table. And it's funny, it's, it keeps going this way, so we're gonna keep it kind of close to the edge. So this is what we got. Um, we have eight dice. I'm gonna explain these dice as we go through this process. Oh no. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I thought I lost my black marker. First thing I'd like to start off with is I like to use my black marker to look at elevation. Elevation are the gray dice. What we have here is a tall cliff face. The icons on these dice are pretty easy to interpret. The dice art, by the way, is done by uh, Hanker Inferno, Runehammer, as he's otherwise known. He created the Index Card RPG. He's also an accomplished artist. He did the dice icons. There's a handy dandy little guide to let you know what the symbols mean, but they're pretty easy to infer. Now, we have here a tall cliff face. I don't have any other elevation dice to kind of show what direction the cliff face goes. So I'm gonna remember, oh no, this is a medium cliff face. So I'm gonna roll this one, drop it, and see what direction the cliff curves. So I like to kind of use them to guide me. So. It's just gonna be like kind of this way. So let's go ahead, just go from one side to the other. And that's gonna be our medium, medium cliff face. I'm gonna do the yield symbol, which is kind of like, it shows off where the fall is to the cliff. A little easy to interpret. Boom. Just a whole bunch of stripes. Um, and I'm gonna mark this with plus 30 feet. Awesome. Next up, I'm going to, I'm going to remove that die, push it off to the side. And then I typically look at blue dice, which are water features because they are influenced by height, but I don't see any blue dice in it. Roll any. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at cover. Cover are black, uh, black dice. So what we have here is a fallen tree. I like to kind of draw these like awkward looking pillars to demark a tree. Obviously it looks a little funky because I am uh, not an artist. I am a game designer by trade. Uh, let's see, okay, cool. So we got, for cover, we've got one fallen tree. I'm gonna remove the black die. Over here we have another fallen tree. So really what this location is, is maybe a place of old deforestation a loggers camp. I'm gonna interpret the world, what it is based off of uh, essentially what I rolled. And I like to combine a lot of these features to create the narrative of the location. Um, and simply because we rolled, we only rolled eight dice, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to like add as much, take like the liberties to add as much as I would like to embellish. So I think this is a place of deforestation essentially because we did roll multiple fallen trees. So I'm just gonna draw a bunch of like fallen logs 
across the area. And actually, I'm going to do one that's a little bit more interesting. It's going to be a fallen log that's kind of like teetering. That way people have an easy access up the cliff. Cool. You can't successfully talk and draw at the same time. <laughs> you would hope that if I had to choose one or the other, one of them would at least be good. But I can't promise that the conversation or that the drawings will be any good, even if I decide to like concentrate on the drawing aspect or on the docking aspect. So there we go. I'm just littering these things where I see fit. Cool. That's done. I did draw a, a rock. I did roll a rock here. So let's just say there's a giant stone here. I'm going to put a little bit more of a circular feature and I'm also going to cross hatch it. To me, that just indicates like a solid location. I might even cro uh, cross hatch it rather than just hatch it. Boom. Giant stone. Next up, we've actually got a, a green die, which is a foliage die. It means that there's a tree, which is good because that means that if it's so close to the cliff face that I drew, that also means that we could use it as a means to get up the cliff, like scale the tree. I'm going to put like a little bit of a silhouette of the canopy. That way people understand that the canopy kind of intrudes on the actual cliff face a little bit. Cool. Uh, we've also got tall grass and we have a bunch of shrubs and a grave, which the grave in the situation, you think like, hey, like why would a grave be so close to a graveyard? Um, oh, okay. I like the idea that this is actually like an ancient burial ground, right? So uh, maybe a spirit is actually upset that the forest around their grave is being demolished, being torn, ripped root, and uh, is being used. So I think this is going to be the location of some type of ancient fae spirit that once lived here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a purple die, because to me, purple kind of represents something special. I'm going to draw a rather large uh, log structure, maybe. I don't know what a, a phase grave would look like. I imagine like there's a bed of flowers around it. Okay. And maybe it is constructed of like twisted roots and, and life. So I'm going to draw something along these lines. Oh, gosh. I wish I didn't draw such a square shape. I think it's more like circular vines that have been twisted over the body of something, which I think is pretty cool. And it's circled by, once again, a bed of flowers. It's kind of like this very strange, like, furl, briar-like ball. So I know it looks ugly, but to me as the game master, that's what it is because of, based off of what I rolled and how I interpreted the situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, actually just, I'm gonna add a bunch of broken logs. And the reason why I'm kind of interpreting that this is also the location of a fae, uh, an, an entombed fae spirit, is that not only did I roll the foliage die and all these broken trees, but I also rolled the shrubs and the tall grass, which to me says like, hey, this place is pretty verdant and filled with life and flowers and plants greenery so let's just go ahead and build on that concept so cool uh this was shrubs i know we had like a tall grass right here and maybe i should be holding these up that's tall grass these are the shrubs so i'm going to and the shrubs because it was so close to the gray that's why i decided to put the make the grave like a living thing i'm going to go ahead and draw the shrubs actually in red because it's, it was on the red dye. It's just a briar patch. Maybe, oh yeah, maybe it is like an actual briar patch. It's some type of magical defense that cuts up anybody who comes too close. Um, let's give it a little bit more fluff. Cool. Nice. And then the last thing we have here is tall grass, which 
I remember the scene from a uh, Jurassic Park movie where they're maybe Jurassic Park two when they're running away from Jurassic uh, Velociraptors and the tall grass. Which I kind of think is a cool idea that they're trying to escape maybe, and the players are escaping through the tall grass this direction, right? And they need to climb up, scale up the cliff to get away from the creatures down below in the tall grass. And when they get up here, then they're going to be able to see down at this large structure on the map. So I think for tall grass, because it's going to be extensive, I don't want to draw just like a bunch of, I don't know, like uh, little squigglies. I think I'm going to draw with a green marker and just kind of do these little spiked features to denote like the distance and breadth and width of this tall grass. Just to say like, hey, it's pervasive. It's all over the place. Cool. Well, let's put it on this side as well. Because all this needs to do is be functional at the table. I don't need it to look pretty. I just need it to be uh, re readable for my players. And as I've said, this, well, let's, let's once again, like take this off. Look at it. It's a unique map. We've got a cliff side that overlooks tall grass, a, a, some type of fey creatures, briar s grave that they're entombed in, fallen trees. Maybe the spirit is upset about the deforestation around them. And I wouldn't have created a battlefield like this for my role-playing game group, or maybe even for my war game, if I hadn't had the dice fall battles course set. So if you like it, Go ahead and click the link in this post, wherever you find it on the internet. It'll take you to the newsletter. The newsletter will be like, yo, sign up. I am only going to message you when this hits Amazon or when a future product. So, for example, if we have future products like for a city dice or for ruins dice, you are going to just be updated when those events happen to say like, hey, now you can get your hands on it. Otherwise, I'm not going to message you. And as a thank you, you're going to get a 10% discount because... I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking you taking you taking the time to take a look at this. And thank you so much. Have a great day.